Constraints are rules enforced on the data entered in the columns of a table. These are used to limit the type of data that can be entered in a table. Use the constraint clause in alter table or create table statements to create constraints. There are two types of constraints, a single column or column level constraint, multi-column or table level constraint. The column level constraints are applied only to one column, whereas the table level constraints are applied to the whole table. A single column constraint is declared with the field itself after the field and data type have been declared. Primary key constraint. A primary key is a field which can uniquely identify each row in a table. Primary key constraint is used to specify a field or fields in a table as primary key. On the Create tab in the Queries group, click on Query Design. Click on View and select SQL View. Enter the SQL statement in this window. Use this statement to create a table employees with the employee ID as primary key. To add the constraint, type the constraint keyword immediately following the specification of the field's data type. Notice that the name of the constraint is specified pk underscore employees. Run the query. A new table employees A is created. Open the table in design view. Employee ID is declared as primary key. You can use a shortcut for declaring the primary key that omits the constraint clause entirely. Use this statement. Constraint clause before the primary key is removed. The shortcut method randomly generates a name for the constraint which will make it difficult to reference in code. Run the query. A new table employees B is created. Open the table in design view. Employee ID is declared as primary key. To create a composite primary key based on multiple fields, use a table level constraint. Use the constraint clause outside a field definition clause. Use this statement to create a primary key based on employee ID and last name. Type the constraint clause after the field declarations. Enclose the fields separated by commas in parentheses after the primary key keyword. Run the query. A new table employee C is created. Open the table in design view. Employee ID and last name are declared as primary keys. A foreign key is a field in one table that references the primary key in another table. The data in the fields from both tables is the same and the table with the primary key must have matching records before the related records are added in the table with foreign key. Like primary keys, you can define foreign keys in the table declaration by using the constraint clause. For example, to create an orders table where a customer can have multiple orders, a one-to-many relationship, declare a foreign key constraint. We have an existing table, customers, and customer ID is defined as primary key. This statement creates the orders table defining its primary key as order ID field. It also creates a one-to-many relationship between customers and orders tables by defining another customer ID field in orders table. This field is defined as a foreign key that references the customer ID field in the customers table. Note that the name of the constraint follows the references keyword followed by table name and field name. Run the query. Orders table is created. Open orders in design view. Order ID is declared as primary key. Now enter a record in the orders table with customer ID 15. Next enter another record with customer ID 22 which does not exist in the customers table. You will get an error showing that you cannot add a record because related record is required in table customers. We can establish a one-to-one -one relationship. For example, each customer can have only one record in address table. Use this statement to create an address table. Note that the customer ID field is both the primary key for the address table and the foreign key reference to the customer's table. 
run the query. Address table is created with customer ID as primary key and foreign key. You can have only one record in address table for a customer in customers table. For example, insert a row in the address table for customer ID 9. Now enter a different address for the same customer. You will get a duplicate values error. Now add a customer ID 25 which does not exist in customers. You will get an error saying a related record is required in customers. Constraints also can be used to restrict the values entered in a field. You can restrict values to not null or unique. For example, this statement creates a table students with the fields ID and name as not null and ID is unique. Run the query to create the table. Now in students table, insert a record with ID as null. You will get an error. Try to insert a record with the same ID. You will get a duplicate values error. Constraints can also be added after creating a table using alter table and add constraint. To restrict the combination of first name and last name in customers table to be unique, create a constraint. Because this is a multi-column constraint, it is declared at the table level, not the column level. The customers table has the fields first name and last name. Use the add constraint clause and define a multi-field list. Use the alter statement and add the unique constraint on the field's first name and last name. Use the add constraint followed by constraint name and unique keyword followed by the fields separated by commas enclosed in parentheses. Run the query. Now try to enter the same first and last name for the next record. You will get an error. To download example access file, please click on the link in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.